Okay, in this video we're going to do a trig substitution. Uh, so the question is find the antiderivative of 1 over x squared times square root 1 plus x squared. And when you see this uh, square root 1 plus x squared, you should think to make the substitution x equals tangent theta. And so we can write dx equals secant squared theta d theta. And we can formally make this substitution secant squared theta d theta divided by tangent squared theta square root 1 plus tangent squared theta. And you can check using the chain rule that these two integrals are equal to each other. And so now we have this integral and we can simplify it because uh, the square root of 1 plus tangent squared theta, 1 plus tangent squared theta is equal to secant squared, so this square root is equal to secant of theta. And so this becomes integral secant theta over tangent squared theta d theta. And you can simplify this more because secant theta is 1 over cosine. 1 over tangent squared is cosine squared over sine squared. And so this integral becomes integral cosine theta over sine squared theta d theta. <clears throat> and now... To evaluate this integral, we need to make another substitution. So you see that there is a composition of functions, a sine and a squared, and that the derivative of sine is cosine, so you can think to make a u substitution. So we're going to make this substitution. u is equal to sine theta. So du d theta is equal to cosine theta. So this is our du d theta. And we can write this integral now, making the substitution as 1 over u squared v1. And now this is a, uh, an integral that we know how to do. So this is equal to negative 1 over u plus c. And now we want to write this in terms of x, because our original integral was in terms of x. Um, we've made two substitutions, so we need to back substitute two times. So u is equal to sine of theta, so this is an easy back substitution. This equals negative 1 over sine theta plus c. And now um, we made a substitution in terms of x and theta. But it's a little tricky because um, we didn't write theta as a function of x. We wrote x as a function of theta. So x is tangent theta. We could say theta is arc tangent of x. But then this will become negative 1 over sine of arctangent of x. And that's not so nice to work with, especially if we want to um, calculate something with this integral, or if this were a definite integral, that wouldn't be uh, easy to evaluate. So we want to write sine theta in a different way. And the way you do that is to draw the correct triangle. So I'm going to draw this right triangle. This is a right triangle where, there, where this angle is theta. And the key is to set this triangle up so that it matches the substitution that you made here, x equals tangent theta. We know that in a, in a right triangle, tangent of theta is equal to opposite over adjacent. And we want to set it up so that it matches x. So we want opposite over adjacent to equal x, so I'm going to make this leg equal to x and this leg equal to 1. And now we know that sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So to find the hypotenuse, we just use the Pythagorean theorem. This squared plus this squared equals this squared. So the hypotenuse has, has length square root 1 plus x squared. And now sine of theta means something in terms of this triangle. So now sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. So uh, we get that sine theta is x over root 1 plus x squared. And this becomes square root 1 plus x squared over x. The negative sign is still there. Plus c. And now this is an expression that we can work with if this were a definite integral or if we needed to uh, work with it in some other way.